Hey guys, how you doing? As I do on this channel from time to time, I, I have dishes to do and uh, you know, <laughs> after just losing your job, you can let these things pile up or you can refocus and actually get her done and I need to get her done. And uh, Especially after the news I just heard uh, that I'm going to be talking about here. Um, so Annemi Paul, the new leader for the uh, Green Party, who I think lots of people the national polling on An An Annemie Paul has her kind of in line in terms of favorability uh, with everybody else. What's notable about Annemie Paul is that she has a uh, uh, undecided rating of like 50%. So that means that half the population is like, I don't know about Annemie Paul. Like, I just don't, I, I, I don't know what to think of her. She's new. She's here. Um... Let's wait for her to come out and say some things, and then we can make judgment. And uh, unfortunately, she has already come out with uh, a statement that means uh, I cannot support Annamie Paul. I think that she is uh, a, a far-right imperialist at this stage, uh, because what she has done is she has essentially come out and uh, regurgitated... Um, anti-Chinese xenophobic propaganda. It's the same stuff that you've been hearing coming out of uh, Western media this whole time, which is, oh, there's a Uyghur genocide going on in uh, China. Oh, the Uyghur genocide. We have to condemn the Chinese for the Uyghur genocide. So the Uyghur genocide, anytime I get to talking about anybody, because I'm very curious about this Uyghur genocide, Anytime I get to talking to anybody about this uh, Uyghur genocide, I'm like, okay, can I see your evidence, right? Like, I'm not just going to go along with something because, uh, uh, you know, you say so. I, I would like to see some clear, clean evidence, please. And in the case of, like, a genocide on the scale that we're talking about, like, two million people. That's what we're talking about. Two million people. That's the Uyghur genocide, right? Like... You would need to have internment camps uh, like the size of the island of Manhattan to maintain uh, a two million person uh, genocide, which is the claim, right? That's the claim. Um, they can't even show a picture of this. Like they can't even show a photograph of this. Uh, it's it's like, and anytime they do show a photograph, there's like, you know, a couple hundred huts. I'm like, that, there's no way. There's absolutely no way that that we're talking about. Uh, uh, a detention center here on the scale uh, of two million people, two million Uyghurs. And then on top of that, like, I'm, I'm yet to find a genocide where there's a growth in population, right? Genocide usually implies a decline in population. But over the last 40 years, the Uyghurs have doubled their population growth, right? So w what exactly is this genocide that we're talking about? Well, it turns out that the genocide that we're all supposed to lose our minds about and suddenly throw China under the bus over is that China uh, has a Uyghur population that doesn't know how to speak Mandarin, that doesn't, that isn't educated in the history of China. And so what do they do? Well, they create, you could call them re-education camps if you like, but they create these centers to teach this population how to speak Mandarin and the history of China, right? Very, very, very similar uh, uh, programs exist here. Very, very similar programs exist all in, in any uh, Western nation and in any kind of place, right? Oh, there's a section of your population that's coming into the society. Like the Syrian refugees that came in, right? Like we taught them how to speak English. We taught them the history of Canada. Like where did they go? They went to a re-education center, right? We, we ourselves have these programs. And so it's very, very, very disappointing. Full disclosure, like I have worked uh, with the Green Party before. Not like, uh, not in a paid capacity or anything like that. But I've, I've uh, volunteered and I've gone around. And I, I have to completely rescind that support now. Because I refuse to support any politician of any sort who is willing to stand up and vomit out uh, imperialist propaganda. Which is setting the stage for a geopolitical conflict, right? Like, for goodness sakes, like Joe Biden is talking about how uh, we might need to escalate to using nuclear bombardment, right? Like, that's a Joe Biden quote. And here's Annemi Paul, who's like the leader of the fourth string party, right? Like, she's the leader of a fringe party who doesn't need... I, this is the thing that baffles me the most about what she's done, 
she doesn't need to support uh, uh, imperialist uh, uh, propaganda or imperialist positions, right? She doesn't need to do it, right? And uh, uh, the only thing that makes sense to me about why somebody in like a fourth string party who wouldn't, who, who doesn't benefit from doing this whatsoever, and in fact would benefit greatly from maintaining the truth, which is that there is no Uyghur genocide, at least like there's no evidence of a Uyghur genocide outside of like some absurdist reports from this, uh, I think his name's Adrian Zenz. Like, Adrian Zenz releases a couple of reports, which is widely debunked, and, like, and again, like, I don't know many genocides where there's a population growth that coincides with it. And so, and again, like, Ollie will happily entertain any evidence. I'm, I'm not going to listen. If some, if you come onto this uh, video and you start chirping at me about, about uh, the Uyghur genocide or anything, I expect evidence, and if you don't provide it, I will happily ban you, because I don't need propagandists on this channel. I need people who are here to have an actual discussion and to actually uh, provide evidence that can be discussed. Uh, but if you are just going to be a propagandist, I'm happy showing you the door, and I will gladly do that. The uh, Sorry guys, I got my little puppy here, and he's losing his little mind. He's losing his little mind sleeping all day and now I'm up I'm doing I'm talking I'm doing the dishes he's like I have a toy throw the toy let's go um because he doesn't understand geopolitical politics uh, sometimes I'm very envious of, of my little guy for that but he doesn't understand geopolitical politics don't you wish that you could live a life where you didn't understand geo ge geopolitical politics <laughs> Sometimes it would be nice. And this one's particularly heartbreaking for me because I always viewed the uh, uh, Green Party as a left-wing party. That um, I think that financially speaking, they were still pro-capitalist. Like, they still had this idea that, oh, we just need to reform capitalism, which put me uh, at odds with them. But I saw that they were attempting to do good things uh, and always attempting, at the very least, to abide by some measure of truth. Always uh, attempting to be honest, right? That and any and anytime people would peg the Green Party with like uh, being dishonest or, or or being kooky, right? That was always one where they'd be kooky, right? Like and uh, but I would look into the evidence that the Green Party was providing and who they were listening to and who they were talking to, and I would always walk away feeling quite satisfied that at the very least they had done their research and while i might not a hundred percent fundamentally agree with their conclusion i understand where they come from and that it had merit and that it should be included in the conversation right like that was always my position on the green party and now i can no longer hold that position right like if uh the green party is going to support obvious imperialist uh uh, uh xenophobic propaganda propaganda in the face of evidence, in the face of people having debunked what meager, uh, pathetic evidence exists of this genocide, uh, I can't support the Greens, right? And it's a shame. It's a shame to lose uh, a, uh, what I would consider a left-wing party, right? It's a shame that uh, uh, that the Green Party now is is an organization that I can no longer trust, right? Like I I can no longer tune into it and, and with a comradely sort of eye and that now I have to look at them deeply with skepticism every single time they talk. And 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 for Anime Paul to do this now while the entire uh, uh, the entire country is sort of looking at her kind of being like, oh, okay, okay, what's uh, what's uh, what's this woman all about? Right? To me tells me uh, uh, just is is a weakness of leadership. Like, it is a weakness of leadership, right? Like, that it, she's probably taken a look at some numbers and been like, well, most Canadians believe that there is this Uyghur genocide, and so I am going to uh, go along with that, right? I'm not going to tell people the truth. I'm not, uh, I'm not going to... Uh, and what's, and what's also confusing is just, like, why even talk about it? Like, why why, why is this the thing that Anime Paul is making headlines for? Like, what, 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 why is it, like, just from a political standpoint, why is it that this is the thing that Anime Paul feels like 
needs to be at the forefront. And so, like, like, and an, so an enemy Paul Canada would not be much different than a conservative or liberal Canada at the end of the day, right? Like, that the Green Party was always a party that was talking about uh, uh, environmental issues. Well, even the, even, the, even the liberals now talk about environmental issues, right? So this, this raises a really excellent question now, uh, which is, why does the Green Party exist? What, what does it represent? What does it stand for? Certainly, certainly not anti-imperialism, right? As they double down on, on uh, overt, <laughs> obvious propaganda, uh, uh, imperialist propaganda. I mean, they don't really have the market anymore on, uh, uh, they haven't cornered the market on the environmental issues. Like, we do have the Greens to thank, in my view, for, for popularizing and bringing uh, those issues to the forefront. I mean, I guess there's still the basic income. Like, the basic income is sort of the last thing that they have absolutely pushed on uh, and made, like, a significant party platform. And they should continue making a significant party platform because that puts pressure on the other parties to do the same. It will be incredibly baffling to me if uh, Jagmeet Singh doesn't, uh, uh, doesn't use the basic income as a, ma a significant uh, uh, issue, doesn't create a, a major, major argument for the basic income in the next election will be very, very, very confusing. But I think it's like the last position that the Green Party's actually, actually has uh, that I would consider even remotely left or uh, which it's like the basic income is steadily becoming a centrist position. Like it's steadily becoming, I shouldn't even say steadily becoming, like it's popular amongst liberals. Like it is a centrist position now. So like, why does the Green Party exist? What are they for? Right? Like, and, and who is this enemy Paul? Right? Like, I would, th I would have thought that the Green Party would have wanted to elect somebody who wasn't, uh, who wasn't going to support imperialist propaganda, but it seems as though they've gone ahead, uh, and it's, it's hard for me not to conclude that they made a decision based on optics here, right? Enemy Paul is... Uh, clearly, like, a black woman, <laughs> right? That's good from an optics standpoint if you want to get into the cynical politics of it, which I do. Um, but one hopes that, like, one thinks that, like, the Green Party, which in my view has always been quite uh, anti-imperialist, anti-colonialist in its perspective, wouldn't double down on colonial... Uh, imperial propaganda. So I feel like I'm going in circles on this one, guys, because I'm, I'm very disappointed. Like, I'm very disappointed. It's disappointing to... Um, it's disappointing that there was a party who I thought that I could communicate with, who I thought that I could talk to, who I thought... Um, who I thought I could perhaps even have a home in... Uh, that now is obviously, like, that's, it's no longer a safe, it's no longer safe, right? Like, and I talk a lot about, like, how the left eats itself and that there's moral purity and all that kind of stuff, uh, uh, and uh, how I try to avoid it, but it's gotta, like, it's gotta come from honesty, right? Like, we've gotta be honest with each other, uh, if we're gonna be talking about these issues, and spreading around this kind of propaganda is not honest, like, that's not a policy position, right? Like, that's we're not having a disagreement on, like, on policy, or we're not having a disagreement on how one thing should operate or the other, right? We're, we're, we're having a disagreement on what is real and what is fake, uh, and what is, and whether or not we should uh, uh, demonize a group of people over overt and obvious propaganda and lies. Like, again... You are free to show me the evidence. I will happily look at any evidence you would like. But all of the evidence that I have ever been presented on this issue is, has been handily debunked. And, and is constantly... Uh, uh, and like... And, and these debunkings, they're not secret, right? You can go to YouTube. You can find them, right? Like, you can... You can have these things pointed out to you. There are articles. Canada Land has done wonderful articles on this, right? Like... So, so 
So I get stuck on why this exists, why this has happened, why, uh, why Annie Paul feels like this is a good political strategy, why Anne-Marie Anne Paul feels like this is a good moral position, right? Like it's, this is, this is, um, highly disappointing, highly disappointing because like, I understand why the imperialists are doing it. It's because China is going to become the economic superpower in the next 10 years, right? That in, and probably less than that even, that like China's economic plans and how China operates, right, has, uh, has defeated capitalism, right? And as capitalism goes into a decline, uh, which it is going into a pretty major decline, um, China is going to pick up the ball and run with it. And they're going to become the economic superpower on the stage. And once that happens, Western uh, uh, countries are going to be in a bit of a tizzy about it, right? They're going to be like, what if China decides to uh, uh, just abandon the American dollar as the reserve currency, right? Like this, th this, this sets the stage for a major global um, conflict. And we should be going into these conflicts, eyes wide open, and with honesty. Like, if we want to discuss China, like, why are, we, why are we coming at China from this really pathetic, like, obviously overt uh, bullshit position, right? It's so nonsense, and it's such, it's such total crap. Like, we could, like, imagine if we were actually critiquing China on grounds that had any merit. Right? Like, imagine if we were coming at China with, with, with anything that had anything resembling uh, truth or honesty or even good faith, right? Like, these, these, these attacks on China from, for, the, for the Uyghur genocide, like, that's a horrible thing to accuse somebody of, to accuse a nation of, right? Like, to, to say to, and, and simultaneously to accuse them of that while you still have, like, ice concentration camps, like, while you still, like, you just came out of the era of Trump, who had these concentration camps and this ice these ICE detention centers up and running, and you're trying to deflect from that with this Uyghur propaganda stuff. Like, that's really gross. And, and so for Anime Paul to take the party down this, I, I just, I think it's politically a losing strategy, first of all. Like... I just think that people, lots of people are going to see through this. I know that lots of people aren't, and that's what's really terrifying, right? Is that lots of people aren't going to see through this. Lots of people are going to double down on the xenophobia that's, and the propaganda that's being spewed out of organizations like the Financial Post and the National Post and Post Media generally, right? The Globe and Mail is not innocent of this either. And instead of having like an actual critique of the country and what the country is doing. Like, if you want me to have a critique of China, I would talk about how they need to have, um, they need to have a, uh, a, a cultural renaissance in regards to their, like, <laughs> people should be allowed to be gay, right? I know people who fled from China because they were homosexual, right? I don't think that China's, like, the greatest place in the world when it comes to, uh, um, uh, race relations or gender relations or any of that kind of stuff. The stuff that we've been focusing on for a long time here. Um, but none of that has anything to do with whether or not they're committing a genocide on people, right? Like, and I think it's, I think it's really disgusting that Anime Paul has moved forward on this and that there's this, uh, I just think it collapses all support that somebody can have for the Green Party. And makes it very difficult for me to want to move forward with them. And now, I mean, they're essentially just no another right-wing party, right? They're right there with the uh, they're right there with the liberals and the conservatives. They're just like a right-wing uh, party that's touting a col colonization uh, a colonization imperialist line. We don't need another one of them. <laughs> We don't need another one of them, and that's what's so disappointing, is I was kind of hoping that Anime Paul, who is who was younger than Elizabeth May, right, who comes from a, a diverse background, who has definitely experienced 
uh, hardship and uh, uh, racism and these sorts of things in her life, I, I genuinely hoped that she was going to pull the party further to the left. I genuinely hope that she was going to look at this party and be like, yeah, we, uh, this is a good place to be, right? And I would say that the, the Green Party was a center-left party. Um, and it's disappointing to lose ground like this. Uh, okay. This is going to be the end of me, guys. Uh, if you've made it to this point and you haven't subscribed, subscribe, right? I do this stuff all the time. Um, uh, every day, <laughs> probably more now that I'm experiencing a little bit of unemployment, uh, because, Hey, uh, if you have political views that don't align with the capitalist state, they will fire you, uh, uh, evidence and the, uh, so, uh, like, like the video. Don't forget to do that. Like it's right, it's right there, right, right there. <laughs> Share the video. Go p p piss off your uh, piss off your conservative uncle, your your conservative dad with this stuff. I have no problem chewing them out for their dumbness. Uh, what else? Oh yeah, hey, I'm unemployed now. Give me some money. <laughs> uh, Patreon down below. Uh, also, there's a link there to Socialist Action, and I should bring that up actually right now. I've got a lot of time left on this video. I should actually bring that up in this context. is a great place to talk about them. Uh, social Socialist Action is a left-wing organization that operates uh, independently of the political structure, uh, but works with specifically the NDP at this moment. And I think that's probably where they'll continue, uh, because the Green Party has now pushed themselves uh, too far to the right to be considered allies any longer. And the... Um, uh, but I think it's important to get involved in uh, uh, non-political organizations that have political agendas and political objectives because it makes you more agile and it's better to be in a group and to be voting in a block. And hey guys, if you've made it this far, hey, there's my little pucker pup. He's been bothering me this whole video, haven't you Milo? Haven't you Milo? Yeah, you good little boy. Oh, he's such a good little boy. Yeah, look at his little tail wag. Oh, he's such a sweetheart. <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, consider joining Socialist Action. Uh, I have. Consider uh, uh, consider putting your weight behind socialist ideas. Um, and sorry to say it, but we've got to abandon the Green Party like we've got to abandon the Conservatives and the Liberals. Uh, that's very disappointing to say. Okay. I love you all. You're, you're doing good things. You're making good decisions. Don't let these guys gaslight you because they have paid millions and millions and millions, if not billions of dollars to gaslight you and to, and to make you pretend as though you are not relevant. You are relevant. You matter. Uh, keep fighting the good fight. Keep fighting the good fight. Good luck. We're going to need it.